What's up guys? My name is John Haas RN, founder of nursing.com. Today we're going to be covering three cardiac medications in three minutes. The first one we're going to cover is warfarin. When we talk about warfarin, we're talking about an anticoagulant. Now, how does it work? It actually works by disrupting the liver synthesis of vitamin K dependent clotting factors. So that's the first thing I want you to keep in mind here is vitamin K. The next thing I want you to keep in mind is bleeding. We're disrupting these clotting factors. So if we're disrupting clotting factors, what are some of the reasons we might be using this? Well, we might be using it for venous thrombosis, we might be using it for AFib, and we might be using it for things like myocardial infarctions where we need to get that blood moving. Again, what are some of the contraindications? Well, if we're dealing with bleeding, a patient who's actively bleeding, that's gonna be a contraindication for this drug. Also remember that aspirin and NSAIDs, they can increase bleeding in your patients. So it might be important to watch your patient if they're taking aspirin or NSAIDs and they need to be on warfarin therapy. So the biggest thing I want you to watch for is signs of bleeding in your patient. Now, what are we gonna do if the patient starts bleeding actively? Well, remember, we're blocking the synthesis of these vitamin K dependent clotting factors. So what can we give? Well, we could give vitamin K to try to counteract the warfarin. Now, if that vitamin K is not working, if it's taking too long, which it does take a long time, we can give fresh frozen plasma or we could give blood therapy, blood transfusions. Now, aside from vitamin K and bleeding, the biggest thing I want you to keep in mind here is that we need to be watching our patients' bleeding times, specifically our PT and our INR. You guys know those from your lab values classes. With our PT, we want a therapeutic range of 1.3 to 1.5. With our INR, we want a therapeutic range of 2.5 to 3.4. When we get our patient to that range, that's the therapeutic range for warfarin therapy. The next medication we're gonna cover is amiodarone. Amiodarone is a class three antiarrhythmic as well as a potassium channel blocker, meaning that it binds to and blocks potassium channels, which prolongs repolarization of cell membranes. So how does it actually work? Well, it works by prolonging phase three of the cardiac action potential. And by doing this, it's going to inhibit aortic stimulation and slow the heart rate. So we're having a decrease in heart rate. It's also going to lead to decrease in peripheral vascular resistance, which is going to lead to vasodilation. So now that we know this, what is it used for? Well, it's used for things like AFib, ventricular arrhythmia, supraventricular TAC, and ACLS protocol for VFib and VTAC. What are the side effects we're gonna be looking for? Let's go back to our little chart right here. We decreased heart rate and we increased vasodilation. So we're gonna be looking specifically at a bradycardia as a side effect, as well as hypotension. Now there's a lot of other things you can look for here with amiodarone, but the big thing I want you to keep in mind here is that we're messing with the heart rate here and we're messing with peripheral vascular resistance. So I want you to be watching your patient's EKG the entire time they're taking amiodarone. The last medication we're gonna cover is metoprolol. Metoprolol is a beta blocker. We know that because it ends in LOL, all right? This is specifically targeting beta-1 receptors. We have one heart, we have two lungs, beta-1 receptors. It's specifically targeting these beta receptors within the heart. So for blocking these beta-1 receptors in the heart, think about what we're gonna be using this for. We're gonna be using it for things like tachycardia. We're gonna be using it for things like hypertension. We're gonna be using it for things like angina. We're gonna be using it for things like prevention of MI and management of heart failure. As far as side effects, just like everything, go back to the purpose of the medication so you can think about the side effects. If we go too far with blocking these things, what's gonna happen? Well, we could have low blood pressure and we could have low heart rate. So we're gonna be watching for signs and symptoms of bradycardia and hypotension, things like lightheadedness, things like low heart rate, things like low blood pressure. That's what we're gonna be watching for with these patients taking metoprolol. So some nursing considerations, be sure to always be watching your patient's heart rate and be sure to be checking their blood pressure. Damn it guys, it looks like I went a little bit over, but I hope that video was still helpful for you guys and that you learned something new. If you're struggling with nursing pharmacology, you are not alone. Many nursing students and nurses struggle with pharmacology. If you wanna get our free book, 140 Must Know Meds, head over to nursing.com slash 140 meds and you'll get a copy of that book for free when you pay for shipping. All right guys, we love you guys. Go out and be your best selves today. Happy nursing.